anti-Afro Spengali's, it's time for me to revisit the We Are Not Slaves theme. Periodically, I like to come up here and remind those who need to know, we are not slaves. We are not your slaves, physical or mental. And look here on the screen, you see, just imagine someone feeling mentally enslaved or even physically enslaved, guaranteed these are elements they're likely to feel. And this is very significant because you hear things like you did with NPW cannibalistic self-incrimination rant. You felt a very somber aura quiet and monotone from others, except for one person who was egging or trying to egg on Rev G and he failed to do so. But you heard one subject, Dumpsy, the one who's married to the convicted child abuser, the Medicare defrauder. I mean, everything essentially negative about this person is just simply reality. He said, we're holding you accountable. We're holding you accountable. Saying this to Rev G. Accountable in the forums in and around the Umar Johnson sector. And I thought to myself, maybe that statement has relevance after all. And this is how I see it. You heard all of this foul, abusive language, a lot of it deception, fabricated. It's having to be massaged around and spliced up and delivered as if it's fact. All of that feedback you heard. And then the accountability speech. This to me was very revealing. This is applicable to the creep who actually made the statement, the Medicare defrauder, the married to a child abuser, scam, who perpetrates any and every fraud he can think of. Then you had the subject who was completely out of control, NPW. And we're talking about accountability based on the way these two move. And we've heard both of them act like this before. This is their version of accountability that they were brought up with. And you can be certain what you see here on the screen is what went down. So what do they do? They simply replicate this conduct towards others. I mean, it's implausible you would have NPW up there acting as if she was victimized, offended about the term Dr. Poop. And who was the person who introduced feces into the equation? It was Dr. Poop, Nikki Proctor Walden, specifically made the point to start telling people to eat her feces. She said it was in toilet stools. She said she was baking pies with it. She introduced this theme in and around the Umar Johnson sector and then got mad when people decided to do what? Reconfigure it. It's her own words. And now she feels offended about Dr. Poop. Well, she created Dr. Poop. And I cannot tell you how much I would love for Nikki Proctor Walden to actually file a lawsuit because the cease and desist it's nothing other than a ploy designed to make others feel how she has felt. Look on the screen. She exhibits how she feels. All of these, this is her mode of operating. Every single situation that she considers to be unpalatable to her, these are the objectives that she aims for when she calls herself going off on folks 
making herself look like a complete and total fool. Yes, unhinged. Yes, unstable. And absolutely, we can say that in describing her behavior and there is no liability associated with it. We have a right to characterize behavior of those who are on the attack. Unhinged and severely unstable behavior in multiple domains. Her own friends even come out and say this, but she exhibits it. Her own so-called fake friend, Carrie Ann, I'm gonna repeat it, talked about her financial problems, talked about her marriage problems, talked about her health problems, talked about her job problems, and spread that information to who? To Photon. This is what she wants to consider a friend, and that's her business. But she's not gonna hide from us what's really going on. She aims to make others feel what she feels. She really thought she was hitting home, but eventually I know she knew she thought she was hitting home runs, but then begin to see that she wasn't. It was very frustrating to not be able to get the reaction that she displayed when these things were said to her and how others reacted when she said it to them. This is what she's looking for and she didn't get it. Just because someone jumps up and says, oh, you got body bagged. What does it mean for the person on the receiving end? Did they feel the way that NPW set out for them to feel? And the answer is no. Who ended up feeling this way? The person who was screaming and hollering. It's just a reflection of how she feels, how she exists. We've seen this people out here in the open when she was exposed for being a fraud, claiming she had so much more money than all of these subjects, she was up here begging for money from them so she can perpetrate a fraud and give all these cash apps. Look at the screen, these all apply, people. These do not apply to those that she's targeting. And I'll be specific to us, AFW friends and supporters. We don't feel this way. Gerald didn't feel any of these things when MPW got up there and made a fool out of herself. Cannibalized, self-incrimination. That's exactly what it was. But I want to reemphasize that I really want MPW to file a lawsuit. You've got to be really smoking some stuff that hasn't been created. If she thinks we're going to sit here and obey her like we're her slave, and curtail our free speech rights because she can't handle what she dished out. She dished every single bit of it out. And what we decide to deliver back is our decision. None of these elements do we experience with NPW. There is nothing that NPW is going to do to silence us. And let me reemphasize, because I want to add something about a lawsuit. I so want her to file the lawsuit and boy, oh boy, is she going to be in for a big surprise because she continues to insist that we're getting her fired. So let's start out. Number one, let's say that we did get her fired. I'm using that term loosely. It was based on her own behavior. Let me modify that because the reality is we can't get anybody fired. If there's no behavior, there's nothing to report. NPW got herself fired, if that's what indeed happened with respect to us. And if it did, are we gonna lay awake at night, regretting, tossing and turning, feeling guilty? Are you, please, feeling guilty for someone who violated our rights and got handled just how she needed to be handled? But let me look at it another way. NPW, who runs around here insisting that we got her fired from these jobs, plural, would have to prove this to a judge in a court of law for even the lawsuit to get anywhere. And I want to make sure I make this very clear. If NPW, and I hope she does, has the guts to file a lawsuit, guess who's going to be called into court as witnesses, all of these colleges that she's claiming 
we got her fired from. And they're going to have to tell the judge, judge, this is how and why this employee was terminated. And they have to give the information. They can't say it's confidential. This is a lawsuit that MPW is filing with claims that we got her fired. You damn well better believe every single one of these colleges is going to be subpoenaed. And they will have to respond. But I don't even think it would get that far because the preliminary information they're going to send is going to be on our behalf. There is going to be a counter to NPWs. And I, again, we're talking fantasy. I want her to have the guts to file this lawsuit because I know for a fact she would have to lie to the court. She would have to lie to the judge. And that's when she's going to do herself in even further. She will never be able to write up any documentation saying that we are harassing her. We have two years worth of documentation. I have a police report. I'm lined up, but she's going to spend the money to file that lawsuit and I'll spend the money to defend it gleefully because I know she'll have to lie to court. So there's no way in hell. Look at this list here. NPW would ever succeed in getting us to feel like this. We are going to speak when we choose to speak. NPW does not control us. She doesn't tell us what to do. She can't run roughshod over anyone when she can't even take care of herself. She keeps bouncing around from job to job. If she wants to go ahead and blame me and Red G for that, go for it. She is going to have to prove that in a court of law and I am so looking forward she is gutless. She's nothing but a vulgar and vile windbag who lies straight through her teeth. All this talk about all this money. She has to sit here and borrow money to perpetrate that she's flexing like that. I don't have to borrow any money if I'm going to support a channel or a program or a space. It's the money that I earned. I don't have to go ask somebody to help me perpetrate a fraud on YouTube. And that's exactly what happened. She thinks she's going to come back here and tell people what they're going to say, when they're going to say it, how they're going to say it, and whether they should stop talking, this is how she's been treated. So she's expecting to be able to do this to other people. She's got the wrong group of people. None of us are going to listen to NPW. She will not be able to silence us. We are using her words. We have these live streams. I don't care how many videos are taken down. I don't care how many channels are snatched by YouTube. We still have the live streams where she came up on panels and made the statements that she made going all the way back to Remix's channel, to the old Slander channel, to Binary's channel, to the Comatose Khan channel, to Phony Tons channel, you name it. She's been on multiple platforms saying the exact same thing about me and about Rev G. And it's captured on live stream. It's not spliced. We have the full live streams. So NPW can try all she wants to make it appear that she has some solid ground. Prove it. File the lawsuit, you chicken shit. I would love to be able to go into a courtroom and show a judge for two years how she's been doing exactly what we said she's been doing. You can't punish anybody for telling the truth, but I welcome the challenge. Yes, folks, there is more coming your way. In the meantime, you know the drill. Buyer beware.